Morning guys! Okay, today we are going to learn how to create textures using paint. So if you don't have paint, please feel free to use wrapping papers to create paper collage. I will share a video for you to follow. To learn to create textures using paint, you're going to need some items from around your house. For example, uh, I'm sure you know what this is. This is a paper foil that, um, that you use to wrap food, leftover food. Aluminium foil is quite useful for creating textures as well. Go rip out a small piece. I'll also teach you how to create texture using crayon. You can just use white, but if you don't have crayon, it's fine. Um, I also have some different kind of brushes, different sizes. I also have this spray bottle, just a small one. And I have this small piece of card. I'm going to use it to scratch later. There are many ways to create different textures on your artwork. So if you don't have one or two of these items that I put on this table, it's okay. You just go around your house and see what you can come up with. You can also use bubble wrap. Uh, you can use fruit nettings, toothbrush, sponges, uh, steel wool. You know the steel wool that you use for washing dishes. Those are very nice for creating textures. Okay, so I have a piece of art block. I cut it into half because I want to show you different ways. Uh, to create different texture. I also have a cup of water and my paint and palette. Okay, for my cardboard, for this piece of cardboard, I'm just going to cut out some random patterns underneath so that later when I scratch, there's a pattern that comes up. So I'm just like cutting tiny triangles at the bottom to give it like a, like a teeth, you know, teeth texture. You can experiment with different kind of cutting. You can make it further apart, you can make it pointy, or you can make it flat like this. So I've prepared my board with this kind of teeth texture. Later, I can just scratch out the texture and it will create like grooves around the texture. So now let's prepare our colors. You want to start with something dark. I'm going to choose blue. So remember the color families that I taught you last time? Complementary colors and analogous colors. Analogous colors are again colors of the same family. Like for example, dark blue, light blue, green. These are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. And complementary colors are colors that are very different. They're opposite on the color wheel. For example, purple and yellow. So keeping that color scheme in mind because we don't want to use random colors, you want to have a theory behind how you use your colors. Okay, the first texture that I want you to experiment with is with this uh, plastic foil and aluminum foil. Choose either one or you can use both. You want to wet your paper first so that it's easier for you to paint. So just pick a big brush if you have. And just wet the whole piece of paper, but you don't want it to flood, right? How do you know that it's flooding when you hold out the paper and the water is dripping down? That means your, your, your paper is a bit too wet. So we just want to wet it a little bit, not too much. Just enough so that later it's easy for us to paint. Now my whole piece of paper is already wet. So I'm just going to drip the colours in. And you see, the colors, because of the water, it's spreading quite fast. And this is quite a nice texture, actually. And I think I'm going to use black inside. I'm not choosing to put any contrasting colors yet, because I don't want the background to be too crazy. But I'll do that later on. So right now, I'm just dripping in. A little bit of colors here. You see, it's already dry. So I'm just gonna help it a little bit. Maybe add more here. You wanna work fast in this step, or else your paper will, will turn dry quite fast. Next. Black color. Okay. 
I'm gonna use also light blue because these are analogous colors. I'm working very very fast because I don't want my paper to dry. If my paper dries then my paint won't be able to spread. You can also do splashing. I'm just gonna take the black. What you can do is take another brush. Okay, and just with this one on top, just tap away. So you see the tiny droplets of paint is like spreading like snowflakes. If you want to keep your texture like this, this is okay also. So just leave it to dry. Or what you can do is before the paint dries, you want to take your foil, your plastic foil or your aluminium foil. And you just press down on wherever you want it to be. You want to have like some folds inside. When it dries, it will create some very cool folding texture on the paint. And then just put it aside to let it dry slowly. And when it's dry, we'll just tear off the plastic foil. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my crayon and rub it on my white piece of paper. By logic, you won't be able to see any texture because it's white on white. But later, once you start putting paint, you'll see the textures come up because oil, which is the crayon, and water, they do not mix. So I'm just randomly making like textures rubbing on the white piece of paper. I do not know how the pattern is going to turn out. Next, I'm going to mix um, a dark colour. Maybe I'll mix purple. Same thing, I'm going to wet the piece of paper with a brush or you can use a spray bottle. Then I'm just going to take my brush inside and rub. So you see all the crayon textures that's like popping up slowly. That's from when we rub the paper using the crayon. You can also mix different colors. I'm going to mix in a little bit of pink just to give it a bit more variety. But you want to make sure that your paint is wet and not too thick. If it's too thick, it's going to cover the crayon and your texture will not be able to come up. You still want to make sure that you are using the analogous color scheme, which are colors that are of the same family. Don't go mixing colors that are contrasting just yet because that is going to make your color very, very dirty very fast. It's quite easy to blend the colors while it's wet. That's the nice thing about working with uh, watery paint. But it's very important that you work fast. Don't worry about getting it perfect. You just want to create some really cool, very different texture. You can even create like a galaxy background with this. All you need to do is just add a bit of black. And it will look a lot like galaxy. Or if you want to do forest, you could use green. If you want to do the sea, you can just use turquoise and blue. Once you're satisfied, just let it dry for a while. Or you can use a hair dryer. It will be much faster. After that, we'll move on to the next step. Now look at this one. I dried it with the hair dryer and this thing came out. So you see the textures created by the plastic foil. It's really, really cool, right? You actually see the fold of the plastic foil. Okay, the next step is to add complementary colors or colors that will pop out when you put it on this color. So for this one, let's see. I used a lot of dark blue, light blue and black. So I want to go for a, a contrasting color or complementary color. Uh, maybe like orange or yellow or red. These three colors will pop up if I put it on top. I'm going to use a spray bottle. If you don't have a spray bottle, you can always use an old toothbrush or just do some splashing. I'm going to put yellow inside this bottle. Okay, 
Once you have the colors inside the bottle, just go ahead and spray. The same effect can be done using uh, splashing with the toothbrush or the paintbrush. I just want to show you this because it's something different. Now you see the colors are a little bit dirty but it's okay, I'm just going to put this aside to dry. Okay, for this one I'm going to go for something different. I'm going to try and use this cardboard. So let's see what color do I want to use. Um, I think I'll go with the turquoise color which is a bit of uh, green and blue mixed together. And I think I'll just make it lighter by adding white. There are two ways that you can use this. One way is to put the paint on here and just scratch like a pencil. Another way is to put paint on the surface and then you use this to scratch. I'm going to try both to show you how it both looks like. Maybe I'll do here. Do the first one first. For this one, you need to really make sure that your paint is quite thick. Then you just press really hard and you scratch. I think the next one I'm going to use black color because you see these colors, they don't really have a lot of contrast. This time I'm going to try the loading up technique. Just make sure to paint the edges. It's just like a pen, you know, you need to put ink inside for it to come out. So I'm going to go over the same place. Not very successful, but you still can see some lines at the beginning of the stroke. Maybe let's try putting more. You can also try doing it like a circle. I'm going to try here. Besides this, you can also use a brush or a toothbrush to do that kind of uh, pattern. Or you can use a pipe cleaner if you have. I don't know, maybe you want to go around and explore what you have around the house and see if it works in creating all this crazy texture. Then I'm just going to let this dry. If you're satisfied, then you can just clean your things, but I'm not. So I'm just going to add a bit more texture because I'm not really pleased with how this turquoise turned out. I'm just going to try and cover it with something else. And for this one, I also didn't quite like the yellow, so I'm just going to add on a thicker layer of yellow using my paintbrush. Okay, I want to show you one technique which is called dripping. Now I prepared quite a thick paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dribble it on the paper. Just add a bit of water. And just let it flow. You can help it by doing a little bit of a tap. Or you can blow on it. But it's very important that your paint is thick and watery. You can also use this extra paint to do a bit more splashing. I'll just let it dry. I'm going to go and work on this one again. I'm going to have to figure out how to fix this. I think by adding white, it should be able to solve the problem. Uh, let's see if it works. Now I'm just going to try and draw on. Following the textures that I created just now, hopefully it will draw the attention away from that ugly green that I made.
Okay, I'm done adding the white details to try and draw the attention away from the ugly green. But then I find that this area is a little bit empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my aluminium foil because I haven't shown you how to use it yet. Uh, besides doing it like the plastic film where you put it on the paper while the paint is wet, you can also crumble it into a ball. Kind of like this. And then you can put paint on here and then you can just stamp. So I'm going to try and do that. Maybe with a bit of yellow. Still feels a bit empty over here so I'm just going to add a darker colour. I can imagine if you use this uh, technique to create an outer space artwork, it will look quite cool with a different texture in the background. Okay, I'm satisfied with both my artwork. Just let it dry and then we'll proceed to the last step which is by adding details, refining the small details so that this artwork doesn't look like it's done by a 5 years old. So I've gone ahead and took out all my coloured pens, my golden markers and my colour pencils. So this step is all about adding details so that your artwork doesn't look like it's done within 5 minutes. You can make use of gold markers, a pen, or different kind of coloured markers. Even colour pencils are great. Think about all the elements of art that we used last time like lines, shapes and forms in our first abstract artwork. Actually, if you think about it, the sequence in creating our abstract artwork for this time is a reverse of what we did last time. Last time we started out by drawing shapes and lines and then only we added colours in. But this time we are adding the textures and the colours in before we add all the drawings and the lines and the patterns. The reason why we are doing so much abstract artwork is later on when we're done with this abstract art, we are actually going to cut it up into pieces and make them into a book. I'll show you how the book looks like next week. So now just focus on adding details so that the artwork looks like it's done by someone who's older instead of someone who's 3 years old. Okay, so after adding all the details, I think I am quite satisfied with how my abstract art turned out. I added more drawings in this piece because it was kind of empty. For this one, I couldn't really add too much. I only managed to add a little bit of a city drawing over here. But I think it's already pretty busy, so I didn't want to add too much of it. So your drawing will not be the same as mine, so I need you to really think and ask yourself what else can be done, what else can be added. Have you used all the elements of art, lines, shapes, forms, colours and textures? I hope you had fun experimenting with the different ways to create textures. It will be very useful for your future artwork. For example, you could use textures in backgrounds that appear too plain, and you could also use lines to create patterns in your drawings next time. And as always, I want you to take a picture of your artwork and upload it into Google Drive. Have fun creating!